Hey everyone, Garfum here today with a guide on the Season 5 Globe Monk. So first, a quick overview as to what this build is actually about. It's a support setup meant for 3 and 4 man groups that's based around pulling mobs in, debuffing the mobs, buffing your group, and attacking very quickly while holding a selenium in your hand to spawn health globes. So let's jump into the build, and as you can probably see, spread out throughout the screen are all the pieces to the build that you'll need. So we'll start off at the top here with the stat priority. You're going to want to prioritize attack speed, critical hit chance, cooldown reduction, and vitality. You want attack speed and critical hit chance to work with the selenium to spawn uh, as many health globes as possible. You want CDR to keep epiphany and inner sanctuary up as much as possible and you want vitality for the tankiness to keep you alive in those high greater rifts. Moving on to the gear, in your main hand you'll want to be holding a selenium because critical hits have a 4% chance to spawn a health globe and as a globe monk you're sort of centered all around this item because you'll be attacking really fast, spawning a bunch of health globes and those not only keep your group alive but they'll also be feeding resources to your damage dealer because they'll be wearing reaper wraps which restores resource for each health globe picked up. And if your damage dealer happens to be a wizard, they also have a passive for each health globe picked up. They can cast one spell for free. Moving on to your offhand, you'll want a pig sticker because it can roll with five primary stats and has one of the fastest attack speeds in the game. Moving on to your sets, you're gonna want two sets. The two-piece set of Raiment of a Thousand Storms and the four-piece set of Enas. The gloves, chest, pants, and boots for Enas and Raiment are all interchangeable as long as you get two of each. So if you get two of the pants and boots for Raiment and two Enas, uh, the gloves and chest, that'll work. They're all interchangeable as long as you get two of each. So you want uh, Raiment of a Thousand Storms because of the 25 increased attack speed for your spirit generators so you attack faster, spawn more health globes. For Enas, you want the fourth set bonus to get all four mantras. This is just to buff your group with all those mantras. And for your belt, you'll need Ena you'll need the Enas belt to get you a third piece of the Ena set, and then in the cube you're running Rorg to get to that fourth set bonus. Moving on to your rings, you'll want Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac to further reduce your cooldowns to keep Epiphany and Inner Sanctuary up 100% of the time. For your other ring, you're going to want to take the Oculus Ring, a chance on monsters being killed to spawn a circle of increased damage. So you kill something, there's a random chance to spawn this yellow glowing circle on the ground that your damage dealer can go stand in to get Increased damage by 70 to 85% depending on your roll. Next, onto your bracers. You'll want spirit guards to increase your tankiness. Your spirit generators reduce your damage taken by 30 to 40% for 3 seconds. For your amulet, you'll want a hellfire amulet or any amulet that makes you tanky. So, hellfire, eye of etchlish, or any of the immunity amulets are good. You just want Vites and Attack Speed and Critical Hit Chance rolls on any of those. And we'll talk about the fifth passive that you want on it when we get to the passives. On to the helmet, you'll want a Lyric's Crown and you want a Diamond Socketed into it for the increased cooldown reduction and Lyric's Crown doubles the effect of the diamond that you put into your helmet. For the shoulders, you'll want Lefebvre's Soliloquy. Uh, Cyclone Strike reduces your damage taken by 40 to 50 percent, and that's again to make you tankier, keep you alive in those higher greater rifts. Moving on to the items in the cube, for your weapon you'll want to take Flying Dragon, chance to double your attack speed when attacking, again you want more attack speed to spawn globes faster, and with this buff on while wow, all the other buffs from your party while you're in the greater rift, you should be getting very close to if not reaching the 5 attack speed, which is the max attack speed in Diablo 3. Then for your armor, you'll want illusory boots. You may move unhindered through enemies. This is necessary because the only real way you have to get out is with Epiphany's dash, but that's not reliable, so you want to use 
illusory boots to walk through enemies because you'll be pulling them in and if you need to move on you want to be able to quickly get out and that's the most reliable way to do that. For your jewelry you'll want Ring of Royal Grandeur. Again you're only taking three pieces of Ena's so you'll need the Ring of Royal Grandeur to give you that fourth set bonus. Moving on to the skills. First you're going to want to take Crippling Wave with Concussion this is the attack you're going to use to spawn health globes, so once all the mobs are grouped up around you, you're going to want to make sure to always be using Crippling Wave, and you're going to want the Concussion Rune because enemies hit by Crippling Wave will deal 20% less damage for 3 seconds. Next, you're going to want to take Cyclone Strike with Implosion. This is to group up mobs, and the Implosion Rune increases the radius of the pull. Next, you're going to want Blinding Flash with Crippling Light. This is basically only for the rune, Enemies that are blinded deal 40% reduced damage for 5 seconds after the blind wears off. Next, you want Mantra of Retribution with Transgression. Since you already get all the mantras from your Ina's 4 set bonus, this is again only for the rune, where Mantra of Retribution also increases your attack speed by 10% for you and your allies. Next, you're going to want Inner Sanctuary with Forbidden Palace. This, uh, increases your damage reduction for you and your allies that stand on it, and it also reduces the movement speed of the mobs that are standing on it by 80%, and it increases the damage that the mobs take by 30%. Lastly, you're going to want to take Epiphany with Desert Shroud. This increases your damage reduction by 50%, and also gives you some spirit regen. And moving on to the passives, you'll want to take Seize the Initiative, which Dealing damage to enemies above 75% health increases your attack speed by 30% for 4 seconds. You'll want to also take Resolve. Damage you deal reduces enemy damage by 20% for 4 seconds. Beacon of Yitar. Reduce all cooldowns by 20%. And Harmony. 40% of your single elemental resistances from items instead it increases your resistance to all elements. For your fifth passive, You'll want to either take Alacrity, increase the attack speed of your spirit generators by 15%, or Near-Death Experience, when receiving fatal damage, you're restored to 35% health, 35% spirit, and you're immune to damage and control impairing effects for 2 seconds, so that's your cheat death. And if you don't have a Hellfire Amulet, you'll probably want to replace Siege the Initiative with Alacrity, since it's more consistent, it doesn't rely on the enemy's health, so obviously once they get below 75%, this no longer works, but Alacrity will always be working. And if you're having survivability issues, you can replace Siege the Initiative with Near-Death Experience. Finally, moving on to Paragon Points. If you're not already level 800, this is the order you're going to want to put your Paragon Points in. For core, you're going to want to max out movement speed first, and then put everything into vitality. However, if you feel it's necessary, you can also put it into max spirit, and then put everything into vitality. And then dex is last, you should, shouldn't should really ever need dex, but if you feel like you need more armor for some reason, you can put some points into dex. Moving on to the offense, you want to get cooldown reduction first, then attack speed, then critical hit chance, and critical hit damage last. Now these three are equally important so depending on your gear you might want to max out whichever one is lowest from your gear first and then assign your points accordingly. Moving on to defense you want to max out all resist and then life then armor and then life regen last. For utility you want to get resource cost reduction, life on hit, gold find, and you actually don't want to put anything into area damage because once you get into high greater rifts, there is server lag and area damage attributes to that, so just don't take area damage if you're supporting. If you're doing DPS, take area damage, it's really good, but if you're supporting, you're not meant to deal damage, so don't put any points into area damage, and don't bring it on your gear either. So guys, just a couple extra reminders before I end the video. You're actually going to be very squishy without any of your buffs on, so you want to make sure that you keep your buffs up as much as possible, and that your party members are applying their buffs to you as much as possible. So without any of my buffs up, I'm at 76 million toughness, 
and when I put them all on, I'm at 457 million toughness, and that goes up even more with your party's buffs, and it doesn't include things like the blinding flash debuff and the resolve debuff. So when you're stationary is when you're going to be most tanky because you're applying all these buffs and debuffs to all the mobs. However, when you're moving around is when you're most vulnerable to being one shot or being killed because you're not applying those debuffs to the mobs and it's harder to keep up your own buffs. So while you're moving around, you want to try to keep Epiphany up and occasionally Cyclone Strike to keep that buff up as well. Besides that guys, just make sure you're helping your group to uh, pull in mobs and that you're always attacking to spawn health globes and keeping all of your buffs and debuffs up. That's pretty much all you need to know on how to play the Globe Monk for Season 5. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Globe Monk build. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a like. Make sure to subscribe for more guides. And as always guys, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.